Hello and welcome to a new video about using open source FreeCAD 1.0 in this situation to generate G-code for your CNC. Today I'm starting a new series because I have this very nice new feature on my CNC, the fourth axis, the A axis, the rotational axis, call it whatever you want. I finally have it and I've been able to do some tests. I'm also going to make some videos about how to set it up. But today's video is about generating the G-code using FreeCAD. I have a basic example here, just an additive pipe along a Bezier curve and I'm going to show you how to mill it on the CNC using the fourth axis. As you know, generally FreeCAD is very good at 2.5D toolpath generation. It's fairly good for 3D surface, but what about rotational axis? Well, it's just in a experimental stage. It doesn't work great, but it works. And I'm going to show you today how to set everything up in order to get uh, good results. So I have this body already created, I have a Bezier curve and a circle which I used to make an additive pipe. And now let's create a new job, but before creating the first job I want to thank everybody that's supporting me through my Patreon page. I want to remind everybody that each contribution helps me a lot, so thank you very much. Now let's move on and start creating the job. So let's move to the CAM workbench, select the body the only object that is in my document. If you have multiple objects, select the one that you want. Click on this button, which is create a new job. I won't select any template just to make things easier. Make sure the object that you want to mill is selected in this list. Then click on the OK button. And in this dialog, I won't make too many changes. I will leave the stock as extend models bounding box. Go to the tools tab and here click on the add button. I will use a ball end a tapered ball and a 0.79 millimeters tool bit. I have it created here. If you don't know how to create a tool bit based on a predefined shape or you want to create a custom tool bit, go check my channel. There are videos about both situations. View them, create the tool bit and then come back here to see how to move on with creating the rotational axis toolpath. So I will click on the open button. Let's set some speeds. I will use 3500 both on horizontal and vertical and the spindle speed of 20,000. Select the default tool and click on the remove button. I want to remind you that these values are dependent on the machine, on the tool bit. In this situation they will work okay. I will most probably make some adjustments and I will explain a little bit later in the G-code for the first cut because it will be a very deep cut. But other than that, these values are okay for my toolbit, for the toolbit that I'm using and for my machine. Make sure you test things with slower speeds before moving on to higher speeds. Of course, it is preferable to use higher speeds. Everything will be done faster, but you don't want to break the toolbit or get bad results. So after setting these values, I will click on the OK button to have the job created. And as you can see here, I have a lot of operations, but none of them refers to the fourth axis, to rotational milling. How do I do that? Well, I'm going to use the 3D surface operation. But before creating the operation, some of you might know, you might have tried using the 3D surface in a regular three axis setup. And it might take a huge time to compute the toolpath. Sometimes the computer might freeze. Let's first change something that will improve the computation time a lot. So let's select the job and here in the data tab you have the geometry tolerance which is by default set to 0.000 a lot of zeros. I will change this to 0.1 millimeters. That's the accuracy of my machine, probably even a little bit worse. I'm not sure. So 0.1 should be enough. Now click anywhere else and just for safety reasons, recompute the job. And now I can go to the 3D surface operation and create it. As I've told you, that small change will make a huge difference in computing the toolpath. One more thing that I want to change also for improving the calculation time is the bounding box. I will change it from base bound box to stock. This will also reduce the calculation time to half of the time using the base bound box. Now let's make the big change, the one that changes from a three axis setup to a rotational setup and that is 
the scan type change it from planar to rotational as you can see some things changed here but i will leave them as default they are okay just as they are i want to show you how to create the toolpath and of course in future videos i will address smaller issues so tricks and so on but for this video i will just stick to the basics so everything is just as it should be here click on the ok button and in around 30 seconds i believe we should have a toolpath visible on the screen so it took 31 seconds but if i take a closer look at the toolpath i can see that i have some problems with the returning of the of the tool bit to the start of the cut so it will mill something like this move up and it should come back at this height and then continue with the next cut but it goes up goes down and returns at some difference and that is not related to the safe or clearance height i've tried changing them from the operation nothing changes how do i change that i've also tried to go to the job to the setup tab and at the bottom i have default values here i have the clearance and the safe height offset i've tried changing them let's say 15 millimeters for both of them click on the ok button but as you will be able to see nothing changes just the diameter of this circle so it goes up higher this time it will go back down to the same height and move through the material which is something that i don't want and after it will recompute i will show you what you can do to solve this issue which is something that is normal to appear in something that is still in experimental stage as i've told you the circle has a larger diameter but it will still go back at the or the wrong height so how can i change this select the surface operation and here i have cut mode i will change conventional to climb you won't find this parameter this value in the normal dialog you only find it in the data tab so now when clicking away it will recompute again the operation and you will see that the return path is the one calculated based on the settings that i've uh, entered in the job the offsets that i've entered in the job now i have uh, the correct safe height well it's too large but we will adjust it a little, just a little bit later there's something that i want to show you if i open the 3d surface operation go to the height tab. you can see i have some values calculated here so let's change them let's modify the formula and add 10 millimeters to both of them Now click on the OK button, I will hold the mouse just at the edge of the of the circle and let's see how it behaves when changing the safe and the clearance height from the dialog of the operation. As you can see, nothing changed. The value is still calculated based on the value entered here in the job, in the setup tab, the default values and these two offsets here are the ones taken into account no matter what i enter in the dialog of the operation so if i want these values here to be changed i have to change them from the job that is something very useful to remember and of course you have to remember that you can only set things up properly using a climb cut not a conventional cut for now one more thing that you need to know is that if i set this both to zero i will also have a good result and why is that because let me just rotate the view the offset is based on the diagonal from the origin to the corner of the bounding box so let's use zero and you will see i will have a circle that will pass exactly through these corners this should be a normal behavior because this box is created based on the entire shape of the object so to make sure there won't be any touching when returning the cutter head it will take into account the no, I don't have the stock visible, just a second to turn it visible again. And now you can see that the circle is in this corner. So this is the minimum safe and clearance height that I can use. Other than that, you need to remember to set the cut mode to climb from the data tab. You won't be able to change it from the surface dialog. And now let's export the G-code. For that I will select the job, click on this button which is post-process. Here I can inspect the G-code of course. I will click on the OK button. 
save it and now let's modify the G code a little bit in order to avoid damaging the toolbit. Why do I say that? Well, let's rotate the view from front. The first cut will be made out of a large piece of material, maybe it's a little bit larger than what I have here. I want the cutter head to move slower for the first cut because that's when it's cutting on both sides, it is forced to the maximum, so I want to make sure I won't break the toolbit. So I have the file opened in a notepad. One thing that I can see here is the double parenthesis, which will result in an error in Universal G Code Sender. I will also show you a little bit later how to change that. Now let's change the feed speed. It will start cutting here, and if I scroll down, I can see that the end index angle is here for the first angle, the first cut. I need to change all these feed speeds from 3500. I will use just 500. It takes a little bit of time, but is the safe way to do things. So just pressing up and delete. Make sure you don't make something by mistake and you don't forget a row. Of course, I could have created the operation again using a 500 and just replaced this part of the code, but I think it's much faster this way. Depending on the shape of the object that you are milling, the first line might even be a straight line. So it's not always this complicated. Just modify this. And if you have too many lines, as I've told you, you can anytime create a new operation using another speed for the toolbit and after that replace the first part of the code in the file with 3500. So I'm almost ready. I just have a couple of lines to modify. And now the first cut will be made using a feed speed of 500. This makes sure the toolbit isn't stressed it will remove material on both sides, so I want it to be. Uh, I want it to move slower, and then the following cuts will just take a little bit of material on the side, so I can move a lot of. Uh, so the machine can move a lot faster using 3,500 feet speed. Now I will save the file, and as I've told you, I have a problem here using uh, about this parenthesis. If I open Universal G Code Sender, I will show you in just a couple of moments. So let's open the file. You can see here I have some problems because it will consider the commenting part ended at the first parenthesis and the second one is considered an error. Because I already modified all the feed speeds from 3500 to 500 for the first cut, I will modify this, I will delete the first parenthesis, but I will show you in just a couple of seconds how to modify things in FreeCAD to avoid this type of errors. So now I can save the file again. Universal G Code Sender won't allow me to send the file to the machine if I don't have it saved, so that's a good thing. Now let's go back to FreeCAD. And as you can see here in the tools under the job, I have this object, which is a controller for the toolbit. I used the bad naming for the toolbit. It was a uh, Imperial and Inches toolbit and I wrote the millimeters dimension in parenthesis and this creates the problem. So the simplest thing to do is rename the controller. So make sure you rename the controller, not, not the actual toolbit. Go to the label and just delete the second parenthesis. Now export the job again and you won't have that issue. So let's move on to Universal G Code Sender. I will go to the workshop and let's make the first milling of a rotational axis of an object on the rotational axis on my CNC. Thank you for watching. I hope this was a useful example. As I've told you, it's just a basic example. A lot of other tricks will follow in the near future. You will also find a lot of videos about using Blender for the fourth axis. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet. And if you want to support me, of course, subscribe to my Patreon page. I will be very happy to be able to continue what I do.